Hello everyone, my name is Crystal and the channel is Vintage Booth Pro. Today I am continuing our series that is all about starting your antique booth business. And so there are a couple other um, videos in this series so far. One is about really just the basics of um, before you what to know before you even walk into an antique mall. And the second is building your buyer personas. And um, I've gotten a lot of great feedback on that one. Definitely check that one out if you haven't already. Today, we're gonna to talk about picking your business name and creating a logo. And um, I'm gonna show you how to use canva.com, really quick and easy, how to make your logo. And so I posted this in my Facebook group. Um, and if you're not a member of our Facebook group already, hurry over and join. It's a free group and we have over 4,000 members across the world. And we talk daily about what's sold in business in our um, vintage booths and um, just share, show off displays and ask, get advice and things like that. But anyway, so I posted a picture and said, I'm looking for three people that don't have a logo and would be willing to let me design it for them for free. And um, in return, you'll get you know the high resolution um, finished product, that sort of thing. And so I had um, I had to take it down actually because I had got so many responses. But I'm going to show you the four people that I chose and to um, I created their logos. I created several options for them to consider. And I'm just going to show you the overall process that I use and some of the finished results. Some of them I'm still getting some feedback from. And so they might choose something a little bit different or, you know, a few tweaks here and there. And um, some people can take what I did and keep working on it because that's the goal of this is for you to figure out how to do it yourself. I would like to say that I could offer this as a service, but really I just don't have time to do that. And I think that would be very nerve wracking because I put this video off for well over a week <laughs> because I'm just nervous to get this, um, get this in front of people. So, and just a disclaimer, I'm not a graphic designer. Everything is self-taught on Canva. Um, and these in no way compare to what an actual graphic designer can do. I'm not creating the next, um, you know, Nike logo or something. This is just a simple logo that booth owners can use on their social media, business cards, um, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever you want to use it on. It's going to be um, a good quality logo that you can take and uh, run with and do as you wish. So here's the process I go through. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so sometimes you have an idea for a name and sometimes you don't, and that is okay. Um, but if you have literally no idea, you can go to Business Name Generator, which I think is businessnamegenerator.com. No, not that one. Okay, so this is pretty fun. It also, um, this tool will actually help you find a URL which, um, you know, it, not always necessary, especially if you have no idea what a URL is. If you do not want to build your own website and things like that, I would just stay away from that. But this is kind of cool. It will tell you if it's available or not. So let's come up with a fun name, antique store. Um, I think you can type in a couple keywords, vintage, um, Let's just see what it says. Oh, and this is an AI tool, so you can always say, oh, these are fun. I like them. Okay, retro revival, classic collectibles, um, timeless treasures, and, you know, these are just some ideas to get the brain going. Old world, oh, I can't say that. Old world wonders. Time honored trinkets, past perfect. Um, you know, some really fun ideas, eclectic charm. So there are some ways to get your brain going and to come up with a fun business name. Okay, so next up, we want to, you picked your business name and let's think about this as a long-term business. Maybe you want to um, make it into a corporation, make it an LLC. Let's double check and make sure that there are no other trademarks and i was playing around with it before i recorded recorded this because i heard that taylor swift did register swiftness and i just 
wanted to look it up. Um, so let's look at my business name because I don't think I did this when I started mine. Um, Nichols Dimes. And you can look up over here on the left. You can see if they are live or dead because they do. I think you have to um, renew them every so often or something like that. I'm not really sure. Um, there was a Nichols and Dimes and it is no longer and it was women's clothing, uh, stuff like that. Daily Dimes website, Pride Dime. So nothing that is just like my um, name, Nichols, makes sense. That's kind of cool. Um, so that's just something you can double check before you go into, you know, defining your booth as a full business. Just double check and make sure that nothing out there is trademarked. Okay, so now I... This is why this has taken, this video has taken me so long. I put this out there for, you know, I was really wanting like three to five people to let me um, design their logo. But this one is just so special that I was so nervous about just getting it right. Um, because take a look at this. Um, hey, Crystal, I currently do not have a logo or even a name for my booth. I was thinking about naming it after my late mama and having a silhouette of a lady from the 50s. Her name was Linda Lou. So maybe Linda Lou's was something similar to this. What do you think? First of all, oh, just amazing. Absolute perfection. Um, I just only hope that I could do it justice. And let me know below if you have a great story of where your business name came from, because this one just brings me to tears every time I think about it. And this one I worked so hard on because I really just wanted to get it right. And so um, these are the images she sent me. And what I did, first of all, um, you can go to Canva to the homepage and just look up logo um, um, templates. And that's why Canva is the number one easiest, um, easiest tool to use ever. And now that, oh, I was in the wrong thing. Okay, logo silhouette and you click templates. Okay, so here are just some options to help you get started, just even coming up with a design for your own. Um, you know, the circle logos are big and you can make it as just detailed as you want or as simple as you want. Um, if you are a minimalist, I think that makes a very easy way to make a logo. And so I was looking for something, I can't remember exactly which one I went with, but what I did, I just grabbed one, customized this template. And what you'll want to do immediately is make, um, enlarge it, um, make it into at least 5,000 by 5,000 because this, the logo size that they go with is way too small to do anything with. And, um, you want to have it as high resolution as possible. Okay, so that was just a sample. I've already done the work on Linda Lou. Um, so these are the three pictures she gave me. And what I did, um, I went over to Elements here on the left and just typed in um, 50s and female silhouette. And really hoping that they came up, they had something available similar to what she sent me. And of course... They had nothing, um, so I had to do a little bit more work to find the perfect image, and luckily, um, I found where she found these images, and that was really through reverse image search through Google, just um, images.google.com, and you can click this, upload to file, and I'll do this one um, just to kind of show you where she found it. And now a lot of these are paid sites. So I really I already have Canva that I pay for. So I didn't really want to have to pay for it if possible. Um, so that was a good one, but I really, really liked um, this one. How cute is this? And so this one's used a lot, but um, where I believe I finally found the origin of it was from Amazon. Um, this and Amazon has such strict guidelines about using their images. You really want to stay away from that. Um, but let me go back to this. You can keep looking and find something similar. And I think that's what I eventually did. 
And the great thing is that there are so many sites that, and I think Creative Market is one of them, that allows you, oh, you can purchase it for $6. See, that's a really cool one. Um, just make sure that it's a commercial license and not personal because you're going to be putting this maybe on a website. You're going to be putting it on social media and trust me, they'll find you. <laughs> um, that might not have been the one that I went with, but it's something similar. So just to give you an idea of how to go about finding an image with a commercial license and the commercial license is key. And this one is ultimately the one that was just my absolute favorite. I loved it. And it's digital scrapbook is where I found it. And this is a cool website. It's very similar to um, Graphics Fairy um, that has just images you can use. I'm not sure if you can use them for commercial um, um, licensing on Graphics Fairy, but for, for digital scrapbook.com, you can. And they even say here, we have the most generous commercial use license around. You can read all about it. Sometimes you have to just say, you know, I found this on commercial. I found this on digital scrapbook.com. Um, but this one was free to use. And like I said, you can read all the commercial licensing details here. If it ever pulls up. There we go. Yeah. So use them in commercial layouts. Do not resell. And, you know, that's the main thing. They just want you to use it and not resell the design. Um, so let me go back to this. So this was the inspiration. So that is the inspiration. And here is the first one that I came up with. This image is, um, I got the commercial license for it. I have the paperwork. Um, and this font, it is, might look like it is hand drawn, but really, all I did to find it was go over to fonts and just type in, it's called Bad Horse, but um, you can look in like vintage type fonts and just scroll down and just play with it, you know, just have some fun. Um, you can go out and look at articles and see what people might suggest as good fonts for vintage styles on Canva because there are, I don't know how many, but there are a lot of fonts and it can be a little bit overwhelming, but I came across this one and thought it was so super cute. Um, and then she and her husband came up with this idea for a tagline. And I think it's so perfect uh, because so many of us have this exact, um, exact same thing in our booths, vintage antiques and uniques. And so this one um, turned out to be my number one choice. It has the silhouette design that she likes. It has the fun font that has gives it that throwback look. And um, so that is one of the fonts, one of the logos that I submitted to her. And just with a different uh, point of view, if you're putting it on something um, dark, here is the white logo. So this is the second option. Um, I has that kind of face silhouette, the side look um, that I couldn't find the exact one, but this was kind of cute and similar. It's not really like 50 style, but I thought it was still pretty cute. And this vintage antiques and uniques, this is really easy to do. You just go to effects and hit this curve and you can make it, you know, a circle. You can make it flat. You can um, just do whatever. Thought it was kind of cute like this and that Linda Luz. Also um, kind of that typewriter font that gives the illusion of, um, you know, old timey. So that is a good runner up, I think. And the next one I came up with was this Linda Luz Vintage Antiques and Uniques kind of has that retro glam. And I couldn't decide on this if it should go that way. I think it should go that way. Um, but that's pretty cute, you know, and you can smush the letters together a little bit more. And these are such non-technical graphic design terms, but you know, when we're being resourceful and we want to just find something that gets the job done, this does it. Um, so that turn, you know, it's cute, but my overall is 100% this one. And so what you do to download is you always want to make sure you have the transparent background on and then hit download and you have a high resolution logo that is really all you need for business cards, signs, social media, um, whatever the case may be. And you can also, I did black and white, but you can add any types of colors that you would like. 
Okay, so here is our next contestant. I should call him. I'm sending in my business card I did on Vistaprint and a rough logo I've tried to design on Cricut Design Space. Don't laugh when you look at them. Oh, please. These are amazing. Um, I am self-taught with all of this, so I would absolutely never laugh at you for this because this looks really good. And Vistaprint is a great resource to make um, business cards because they have their own templates and designs that you can use for whatever. And I really like this. It gives the idea of just a cozy home, you know, and if you look closely at what she focuses on is custom work, upcycled furniture, home decor, and resale furniture. So just giving that overall look of, um, you know, just making a cozy home. And that is what she specializes in. Now, I have already gone through and I had to stop myself because Canva had so many good options for um, just this overall idea. So this kind of cute um, modern home furniture, this would be really easy to add in some, you know, furniture piece silhouettes here. Um, home furniture. Yeah, that's a cute one too. You know, it's like you're sitting at home on your couch. This one I like, very simple, minimalistic. Um, you could even add her, at the owner's name here, which I forgot to mention, I blacked out her name on the business card, just in case, you know, everyone's not familiar with, or not comfortable with um, sharing all their details. And um, so I kind of like that, that one, but this one, oh my goodness, I love it. That is just for the cottage theme. I think that is just super cute. And how easy all I had to do was pop in, pop in the details here. And this one as well, it just gives that, you know, the whole house, home decor, uh, just everything. So those are some fun ones to work with. And I'll show you what I came up with. Okay, so here is uh, my very first drafts on this. And, um, okay, so the name's pretty long. So, and if you want to include a lot of information, it kind of makes it kind of crowded. So I do like this one, um, but I, it just needs a little bit more work. This one I love. Um, you can take the name away or add it back in. And I said I wasn't going to share her name, so I'm going to quickly go past this one. This one is pretty close to perfection for me personally. That's just my thoughts on it. Um, I will need to double check the spacing on some of these things. And it's really so easy to do. They just make sure, you know, everything's centered. And I have no idea when she started her business. I will have to get that information from her. And I thought about adding some color into the picture. Um, unfortunately, it's all one picture, so you'd have to change everything. Unless you duplicated it and, like, I did yellow and played around with that a little bit or, you know, something like that. I don't know. I'll come back and play with that some, but I think it's pretty good as is. And here's another thing, example where cute, but it's just really too, um, too much text. So if I could like put it in the middle, I might keep playing with it before I send it over to her. And I'm trying to get this little dot just right. And see, so this is why it takes me forever because there are just too many little moving pieces. So at first glance, this one is 1000% my favorite. Uh, without a second. And if this, if with a little bit of work, I think I could have a couple more favorites. Okay, so now on to Miss Vicky. Um, here is her message that she sent me. Got bad news. The place where I have my booth is closing, but I plan to bounce back, but it may not be until the spring. If you're still able, I would love a logo. Here's a sign, a photo of my sign I have up now. And you know what? I think this is great. I mean, you could do so much with this. And as long as your booth is um, has a name, has a place where it can be identified by you. I think that is a really great start. So I want to show you what I found as something to go on. And these templates are really just a guide. But I really liked the old timey look of this. And, you know, I really just like the font. <laughs> um, I had trouble getting this just right. So I will have to say this is not my favorite option. Um, I think it's still pretty good. Like if you, I think these look like... Um, the dead butterflies and dragonflies, you know, that people <laughs> will frame in shadow boxes. But um, 
it may not be the idea that she's going for, but I did notice that she, in her picture, she has butterflies and dragonflies. And so that's why I went with that. Forgot to mention that. The next one I kind of liked was this very simple, um, but has that, um, vintage vibe. And this is pretty cute. Like I kind of like this and her butterfly is blue in the original image she sent. So she might like that. Um, really just easy to duplicate something like that. All you have to do is um, go over here and search for butterfly or dragonfly or whatever the case may be that you want to use. This one, I just actually typed in butterfly logo <laughs> and this is what came up. And I love the minimalistic idea with that. Um, so this font that they used, it actually, I don't know if you can really see it up here. It added this dot, even though that I is already dotted, it added this dot. So I kind of wanted to cover it up. So I used this um, outline of a dragonfly. But I don't know if it's too busy or not, but I think it's pretty cute. And hopefully she likes that all black. Um, we could probably add a pop of color here. Um, I don't know. I have to play with the little, I don't know what color she would like at all. So that's just, some, I don't know if dragonflies are really <laughs> pink anyways. Oh, and with that issue with the dot, I might have to keep that black. And along the same lines, here is this one. Um, pretty simple, but kind of gets the point across. I added a little line. Ah, and of course I messed it up. Um, just to make that vintage stand out a little bit. And I don't know, I might go back and try to find another blue butterfly to fit right there, but I think that was pretty cute. So I will send those along to her and see what she thinks. Okay, so my last logo that I'm gonna create is from a booth and business name, Three Birds, One Nest Vintage and Home Decor. Would love some sort of bird or nest or bird with nest logo. And so here's the challenge with anything with birds. There are so many options. And okay, I could have spent the entire day just looking at really cool um, ideas for logos. So there are just too many fun ideas. Here's what I came up with. You might have seen this one when I was scrolling through on the left, but typed in bird's nest. This one came up, thought it was super cute. Um, but I think that you know, it might be a little bit too bold. So I kind of went with this and it looks, it's pretty busy. Um, it's got the three birds and one nest in contrast. Um, and this is before I've sent the business owner any, um, any options to get feedback. Oh, and here it is with no nest. Um, and so it's really just kind of like, these are just really first draft um, options. And as as I've been doing, um, I will get feedback from the business owner and, you know, make it as they want it. Um, this one is very refined. I think that you could do a lot with it. Um, and I could even, what I could do so easy, just add, because I don't know how much they want it to be three birds, you know, just have that. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'll play with that a little bit more before I send that over to her. This next one, I don't really look, I don't love it. Um, there, you could do the circle with the, I don't know. I shouldn't have included this one because it's just kind of meh, in my opinion. This has the three birds, one nest in the half circle and vintage home decor. And um, with a little nest with three eggs in it. So I don't know if the three birds are like her three kids or our three grandkids, maybe. I don't know. Um, but then I decided let's be less refined and have a little bit more fun. Um, so this was just a cute little option. I can work on the, um, the font here. She doesn't like that, but just kind of something totally different. And this is another one that's um, a little bit more minimalistic. Um, it's actually, it looks kind of blurrier. My eyes are just going at this point because I've been working on so many logos. Um, but I probably did too many options for this one. But I got to tell you, I came across these graphics and look how cute they are. I just had to do something with it. I did a version with um, no nest, but I thought it'd be cute if the one little bird over here was looking at the at the nest. Um, but 100% this is my favorite. Maybe this one with no nest. 
And then along those same lines, that um, kind of retro, what is that in? Pheasant or a quill, I'm not sure. But those are my logos for the birds, and I have a lot more options to send with this one because birds are just, there's just so much you could do. Um, but yeah, let me know your favorite. And thank you so much for watching. I would appreciate any feedback you have. Do you have any favorites that you saw? And um, be sure to check out our next video where I am going to talk about pricing basics for your business booth. Thanks so much. Talk to you later.